G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the test instruction. So the mnemonic for the test instruction is just test. It takes two operands. The first is a register or memory and the second is a register or immediate IMM. Okay, so any size, 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 or 64. And what this does is uh, it performs a bitwise boolean AND um, the same as the AND instruction, but it doesn't set the answer in uh, the destination or OP1, it just sets the flags. So it's similar in many ways to uh, the COMPARE instruction, but let's see, so COMPARE, the CMP instruction, um, performs a SUB, but it doesn't set the answer in the um, first operand, and likewise the TEST instruction performs a Boolean AND and it doesn't set the answer. Okay, so just a quick uh, review of exactly what a boolean AND is, just in case we've uh, skipped the toot where we introduce that. So AND, if, if we um, if we say A here and B here and A and B. Okay, so I'm going to draw a truth table just here, and we'll go through what this means in a second. So zero, zero, and we've got one, zero, and one. Okay, so zero AND zero. Uh, the value if they're both zero is zero. Uh, the value if either one of them is one but the other is zero is zero. And finally the value if they're both one is uh, one. So what happens is um, if we've got two operands that we're anding together, say AL equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in binary, maybe those digits. Let's say BL equals one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. Something like that. Um, then to uh, calculate what uh, AL and BL, the Boolean AND, will be, um, you look at each binary digit by itself. So here we've got a 1 and a 0, and you come over and look up the appropriate line in the truth table. So 1 and 0, it's this line just here, and we said that the answer is going to be 0. So it'll be right there. Um, here we've got a 1 and a 1 as the second digits, so they're going to be ANDed together. And the answer in this particular instance is uh, this fourth line just here, so the answer is a 1. And so on and so on. So we're going to go through each of these and uh, pretty much find where there's both 1s in both of the operands and set that to 1, otherwise it's 0 in the answer. So 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that would be the answer just there of um, AL and BL if we typed something like AND AL BL. Um, AL would be set to uh, this value. Um, whereas, if we type test AL BL, it'll calculate this value, but it won't put the answer into AL. Instead, it'll just set the flags. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, let's have a look at the flags that it actually sets. So that's how you calculate an AND anyway. Boolean AND. We did do a tutorial on the um, uh, what are they, logical instructions or boolean instructions, so uh, you might want to look that up. Anyway, the flags that it uh, sets is the sign flag, which is uh, SF. Uh, test also sets the parity, and it sets the zero flag as well. So I think this one's PE in Visual Studio. Sign flag might be SF, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, zero is the ZR flag. That's if you're looking at the registers window. That's what they refer to these as. Okay, so if both of the operands have a one in their leftmost bit, so say AL is something like one zero zero one one zero one zero something like that, and let's say that BL also has a one. So maybe one zero one one zero one one zero. Um, the instruction test AL BL um, with those two operands there isn't going to set the result in AL as we went through, um, but it is going to set the sign flag because the answer would have had a one in the sign flag. Does that make sense? So this particular ending just here would set the sign flag. Um, this way we can tell very quickly if two operands have um, negative values in them. So we could say something like jump S to both negative. 
and it would only take this jump, it would only jump to the both negative label if uh, both AL and BL had um, negative numbers when you're looking at them in uh, signed. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. If we had um, not a 1 here in BL, but instead we had a 0 here in BL, then uh, if we went through and anded everything together, we know that we would get a 0 right there, since our truth table had um, a 0 for 1 and 0. So in this particular instance, the sign flag would equal 0. Um, that just tells us that either one or both of the operands is um, positive. Okay, so that's how it sets the sign flag. Um, the parity flag, weird little parity flag. Um, it's going to set this based on the number of ones in the answer. So if we say that AL equals something like 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. If we say that BL equals 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, the parity is going to be a 1 if there's an even number of 1s in the answer, and it's going to be a 0 if there's an odd number of 1s in the answer. So let's calculate the answer first of all. What is AL uh, and BL? Uh, the answer would be 0, 1, 1, um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, we've got 1, 2, 3 1s in the answer. So uh, the parity flag in this particular instance would be 0. or odd parity. There's an odd number of ones. Do keep in mind that even if you um, do something like test uh, AX, BX, even though these are 16-bit values, um, the parity flag only looks at the bottom 8 bits to determine whether it's um, odd or even parity. It's a weird, useless little flag, but um, that's what happens. Okay, so if we had an... if we just... Um, let's just change one of these and we'll... There we go, so if that one there was a 1 as well, and uh, we did test AL, BL, then we know that the answer is going to be a 1 here instead, but the rest is going to be the same. So in this particular instance, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 bits set to 1, so PF would equal 1. Even parity. So we could say something like... Um, um, test AL... BL and JP or JPE um, even par and it would only jump to uh, this label even par if um, AL and BL shared an even number of ones with okay do be careful that you can't um, you can't check the parity of uh, anding together things more than eight bits it only looks at the bottom eight bits Okay, finally the zero flag. This is probably what we'll use most often, but um, this just determines if the answer was zero or not. So, another example, if we go AL equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like that. BL equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like those. Um, then test AL, BL, and J0, jump if it's zero is um, going to jump if um, there's no bits that are both set to 1 in, in these two. So in this particular instance we can see immediately that the answer is going to have a 1 just here and it's going to have a 1 just here. So AL and BL both share 1s in uh, those particular bits by pure chance. I just wrote it out randomly. But um, that will mean that this jump won't be taken in this example since they share um, 1 bits. Okay, so let's get rid of this one, and we'll get rid of this one. We'll change those both to zero. Um, okay, so in this answer, the uh, everything would be zero. They don't share any bits at all. So um, if BL just had a one right there in its um, sixth bit, and AL had all of that rubbish, then uh, this jump won't be taken. Sorry, it will be taken. Yeah, jump zero, don't share. Yeah, so before it would have fallen through to this region just here, but um, this time it's going to take the jump. Okay, so let me just rub all of this out. Actually, I'm going to grab a new page. And we'll talk about how you use this. Or why is it useful to um, have the test? Um, okay, so if you want to know if bit number 8 
is set in IX. Um, oops. You could do something like test IX to 56. Why does that work? Um, we could say JZ to not set. And if we fall through to this region, just here, so we'd have our not set label down here somewhere. Um, bit 8 is set. If we fall through to this region, then we know that bit 8 in AX is set. How do we know that? Well, it's pretty easy really. 256 in uh, binary is uh, a single bit, and it's bit number 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, actually it's bit number 9. Anyway, so whatever AX has got, um, it's going to be anded with this. So AX has got its own values down here, whatever they happen to be. But that's 256, so it doesn't matter what uh, AX has. We're only going to get the um, 1 here, or 0, as our answer. Because we've only got one bit set in this test. So this is um, this is probably mostly the use for it is to test a particular bit. If you would prefer to use binary, then you could just type um, something like um, test ax and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine b. So um, that's the that's the eighth bit just there. This is the ninth bit. So this is this would be the same expression really. This is um, testing if that bit is set. Okay, so that's that's one thing that you can do with it. You could also test if a number was even or not, since um, if this bit here, if 1, then odd. If 0, then even. So if you wanted to know if AX had an even value, you could say test AX and 1 in binary, hexadecimal, octal, or, you know, it doesn't really matter. 1 is 1 in, in all of the counting systems. And then we could say JZ to even number, or JNZ to not even or odd odd number. Obviously, you can't have full stops in your label name. Okay, so that's one use. You could test if it was uh, negative or positive. Another use for it might be testing if a number's. Uh, sorry, that was one use. That was testing if it was um, divisible by two or not. But another use would be testing if it's uh, negative or positive. So something like test um, AL and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, we know that if this is an eight-bit byte, uh, this one right here is the sign bit. So if we boolean and AL with the sign bit, all we're going to be left with is either um, 0 if AL was positive, or 1 if AL was negative. So we could say, um, in that instance, um, JZ um, to positive, or JNZ to negative. Alrighty, and we'd know if AL was uh, negative or positive. And another thing we could do is really quickly test if um, a region of bits was set. So say we want to know if AL has anything set in the bottom four bits. Um, we could go test AL one 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 binary and J and Z jump if it's not zero to something was set. Okay, so our label here would be something was set, and it's only going to take this jump if AL had something, anything at all, in one of these first bits. If it's got nothing but zero in all of those first bits then, um, yeah, the jump won't be taken. Um, you can also test for any divisibility by um, a power of 2, just by subtracting 1 from the power of 2 and putting that as your second operand. So, say, um, say we want to test if... Um, it's a power of 2? 512. We want to test if AX is uh, divisible by 512. We could just do something like test AX, and we get 512 minus 1, which is 511. And that will test if uh, AX is divisible, or evenly divisible, by um, 512. Um, you can have a bit of an investigation as to exactly why that works, but um, 
yeah, it's pretty interesting. So in this example here, we would say um, JZ div by 512 JNZ not div. So you could use, uh, if you wanted to test for divisibility by say 256, then you'd use um, 255. If you wanted to test divisibility by 4096, then you'd use uh, 4095, etc, etc. Pretty easy really. But usually you'll just be testing single bits with this um, instruction. Um, okay, so maybe um, one final thing is, uh, I don't know if we went through this before at the start, but you can test if um, two registers share any values at all. So something like test um, AX and BX, JZ to don't share, and JNZ to share. So it's only going to take this jump if uh, every one bit in AX happens to not coincide with a 1 in BX, and it's only going to take this jump if at least one or more of the 1 bits in AX happen to coincide with those in BX. Okay, so that's the test instruction. Interesting little instruction. And uh, use it to test bits. Thank you for listening.